got my head. All right. Okay, Liz. Um, what's your Hi. ethnicity? <laughs> So my dad is Indonesian and my mom is super white. Okay, what do you mean by super white? Um, she's just like Dutch, lived in the southeast, grew tobacco, went to private boarding school. Um, oh, okay. They owned a lot of, you know, tobacco farms and property and um, just kind of like Wait, are you classic saying your rich mom southern white rich? woman. Oh, okay, I was just going to say, are you saying your mom was rich? <laughs> yeah, classic rich southern white woman. Mm -hmm. And how did your parents meet? They met working in the restaurant industry um, in Blacksburg, Virginia, which is where I grew up. Um, they worked at different restaurants and had mutual friends and hit it off at a party. <laughs> okay. Are they still together? Yes. Oh, wow, that's romantic. That's like, <laughs> out of the notebook. <laughs> so, it is a very good time, yes. Um, did your dad immigrate from Indonesia? Yeah, so he worked, actually, he worked on a cruise ship for seven years. Um, and so, a lot of them, and probably, I don't know about today, but then they would have like a couple months off, kind of like a holiday, um, but it would be in America because they would port out of Miami and New York City. And so I guess I've never been on a cruise, but apparently it's kind of like how people go to the same beach at the same week, like on the same week every year. Um, that's like their vacation, their traditional vacation so I guess people I don't know if they still do it but they would do that on cruise ships and so he got to know I mean he and everyone else a lot of his felt like everyone that he worked on the cruise ship with most of them um married American women and live in America oh um, wow. okay. so they yeah <laughs> um they also like didn't get off a cruise ship you know for you know seven to ten plus years from the 70s until whenever. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, so they would get invited to, I mean, everyone had their own like families that they befriended kind of while they were on their vacation on the cruise ship. And so they'd get invited to spend their time off, like, oh, come stay with us. Like, if you need somewhere to stay, you know, come stay with us in Pennsylvania or in Connecticut, somewhere, anywhere. So my dad has like a handful of like, grandparents I would call them grandparents that we would go visit okay. just like old old people really? that would take him in yeah they were the people that would take him in like every other year um you would just go visit with your parents yeah well like we would go well yeah my dad would want to go check in on like I mean they were basically like parents to him um mm -hmm. when he started you know working on the cruise ship so he has a couple families um that he That's still talks to. Where did you yeah. grow up? In Blacksburg, Virginia, which is Southwest Virginia. So Virginia is like a little triangle um, okay. with a long end, might be the other. Um, so I'm like 30 minutes south, 30-ish minutes south of West Virginia, like the West Virginia border, and like two and a half hours from the North Carolina border. Is it, um, was it small or was it a city? It is a small town with a big college. So it's where Virginia Tech is. So it's okay. a really big university and a, it's like a very, very textbook um, college town. Um, okay. So it's super diverse, but only in the Blacksburg bubble, really. Okay. I mean, not, not as bad. I wouldn't say I said bad, but like not as intense as like maybe like a Missoula um, in terms of like the contrast once you start to get out of a certain range um, Okay, like this, what it was more diverse than Missoula. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. By a lot. Oh, yeah Okay, <laughs> a lot of international. It's a huge. It's a huge university okay. um, with a lot of international students So it's a lot more diverse, but like surrounding towns weren't as diverse, but everything's more compact You know you get further east you get um, mm -hmm. So, 
like the next town over was like 10 minutes away instead of you know an hour away <laughs> okay <laughs> that's how i think about it out here i'm still not used to the the um distance of everything out here <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's been really nice for COVID. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's been amazing for COVID. I hate hearing. I mean, I feel bad for all my friends that I can't relate to, like yeah. their problems that deal with in cities. Um, so when you were growing up, were there a lot of um, mixed kids in, in your schools? Like not, like mixed in what way? Like biracial or multiracial? And yes, there, yeah, there were a lot. It was a small school, like, uh, I would say our high school had 1,200 kids. Um, okay. But, it, I mean, it was majority white, but not like, I mean, we, it's a, like I said, Virginia Tech is a very big university with um, a lot of different programs that attract people from all over the world. And so it, there were always like a lot of Asian kids and a lot of Indian kids and black mm -hmm. kids, white kids. Um, I mean, from a lot of places, like a lot of people, either their parents were studying or they were getting a degree, like a higher degree or they were professor's kids, so. Okay, so you didn't really feel that different or did you? Um, I mean, even so, yes, uh, okay. even though it was like a lot more diverse, uh -huh. you're still a tan person living, okay. you're like a in-between person. Um, so it's hard to like identify with anyone except for like the tan Barbie, Teresa. Okay. She was my best friend, <laughs> you know? So I was like, okay. Were there lots of cliques then, like racial cliques? Yeah, my brother is two years older than me and there were a lot more um, like racial like fights in school and mm -hmm. um, like they'd have to cancel classes for a certain period of time. There were just a lot, there was a lot more violence when he was in like middle school. I remember like kids got sent home and like things made the paper and um, I didn't remember seeing that as much, um, okay. when I went into, like, higher school, I guess, um, and, I mean, yes, there were racial cliques, I didn't see it as much. Okay. Um. Is that, uh, the, do you think that was just, like, the times when your brother was in school, or was it, like, a gender thing or I don't know if it was I mean I would like to think that like with every generation we learn a little bit you know something that we take <laughs> away and apply it to the next one um, it, something that I always think about is like did do people's feelings just go into hiding and then they kind um. of ruminate you know like so maybe it wasn't as outwardly like expressed like racial slurs or things like so when my brother was in school there was a big fight about when he was in like the sixth grade there was a big fight and some eighth grader was wearing a shirt that said you know this shirt is 100 percent cotton and your mama picked it and that was oh like my God. a very big deal yeah. obviously because it's an eighth grader. <laughs> he did not choose to wear the shirt or think this way. No, his he parents didn't know did. Exactly. He did not purchase the shirt himself. And if he did, did he really know anything about it? Yeah. Um, but so, like, you know, then the rules tighten up. So maybe it was a timing thing or maybe it was just because there weren't, that had never happened or they didn't enforce it then. I don't know. Um but I never saw anything like that, like okay. where someone's just wearing something that's just completely terrifying. Um, have, you, have you experienced, um, like, well, have you experienced discrimination based on your looks? Oh, yeah. Like, For oh, sure. what were those like? Um, 
sometimes they were like it was easy to overlook them I think the mm -hmm. older that I got the more I was just like this is like you just kind of drown them out um so I went to school and I went to college in North Carolina which is more southern and um like I was in a sorority and I was my sorority was like predominantly blonde white girls from North Carolina and but like they were fun and I love them but like if you just looked at us you were just like wow this is the blonde sorority okay. um, so there were a lot of times where like we would go to parties and it was like there were I, just random things like someone would ask me like is she mixed like what are you oh the what are you question never stopped okay yeah it really stops what do you think why do you think people are so curious why did that come up so much i i i think it's like half and half like genuine curiosity mm -hmm. and but like how do you phrase that politely mm -hmm. I guess um it never really bugged me until maybe I was like 24 so six years ago okay. it just started to get like become like a like where are you from Virginia no but like where are you from that's <laughs> <laughs> the last Still interview I had, she literally said the exact same thing. Where are you from? Yeah, <laughs> I, you know. my old, yeah, my old roommate in Wilmington, North Carolina, before I moved here, she was Indian and Afghan. Okay. And so we would go out together, and like we look nothing alike. Like our undertones are different. We have no similar features, other mm -hmm. than the fact that we are we're like both under five, four <laughs> and like curvy ish, I guess. Um, and people are like, Oh my God, are you like sisters? You guys are like, where are you from? Oh, you guys man. are like, so cute. where are you guys from? It's like, well, she's from here and I'm from there. We're not related at all. You're not, you know, it's like this whole just mastered it. Like it just became like a thing. We just, just stopped talking to those people. <laughs> Do you feel but, like yeah. being a pretty girl, the way that you experience, like, feeling this otherness is by people just, like, doing that? Like, where are you oh, from? Yeah. Like, just kind of, like... Oh, yeah. It was a big reason why Sonia and I bonded was because we both, like, felt like... Like, we had all these friends, but we were, for some reason, felt next to everyone else always and we like discovered that about each other and we what do you mean next we, to you? like we were always like the odd one out like we were always the weird friend oh. and not really like, probably because we're weird probably because we were actually weird but <laughs> um you know was it all because we were weird maybe um but like we we did couldn't relate to certain things that everyone else could relate to uh, mm -hmm. or we didn't look we couldn't share clothes with our friends because like we didn't look good in the same yeah. tops at all of our you know it's just like it, every anything like we wore it, yeah so like you'd go and get ready at someone's house and there were like eight girls or something and you couldn't pull off anything that they owned mm -hmm. but they could all wear that they could all just sit there and swap clothes and you're just like, okay, so got to bring the whole closet. <laughs> Don't mind me. So then you're like that girl that brings their whole closet and you can't share any. It's like, so it, it so that's out of our control, really. Mm -hmm. um, but it still puts, it made me feel and her feel. I mean, this is like how we became friends because we just bonded over these experiences of like, oh my God, I've never met anyone that has had the, what are you, you know, the, what are you, where are you from thing with anyone? This is cool. Um, so it's finally someone to like talk about those things with, um, that could actually relate. So yeah. it was, I don't know, I guess it made us feel, uh, so that would be like my next two okay. um, categories. Just like not really in the box, but there. I feel like like that experience 
makes you feel very alone and just like I've never realized until having these conversations how many people like us exist in Missoula and I think like the more I drive around the more I realize it but you know it just I think it happens to a lot of people though like if someone's, t I mean, I say a lot of people, but even like people that aren't of color, like some, mm -hmm. they get some weird or they do feel weird things, but maybe, but maybe they don't know how to like express it to their white friends. Yeah. And so I feel like it's, it's just hard for everyone. <laughs> yeah. And what was your home life like? Did you have a lot of Indonesian um, traditions? Um, we did not. My dad didn't really practice. Um, he didn't really pray, like, ever in front of me. He worked. I mean, they both, both of my parents worked beyond full time. So okay. they were really busy all the time. And it wasn't honestly until my dad's dad passed away I want to say in like 2013 or 2014 um that he because he had to go home for the this like seven day ceremony I honestly have not looked into I don't I have not looked into religion in a very long time um so was he Muslim yes okay and he still is um, but so it kind of took this like burial celebration ceremony because it's like a week or 10, it's a very, it's like a couple days and you just sit there and people come in and pass through the house. Um, so, but so it was like a lot of entertaining too, because he's, he goes like once a year and he usually stays for about a month, um, just okay. to see his parents and his sisters. Like he's the only one that got away. Um, okay. So he asked, and then everyone kind of like flocks, like, "Oh, Hamid's coming!" But it'll take me like two weeks to get there, but I'll be there. And there, so that's why he has to stay for a long time. Um, what part of Indonesia is your dad from? He's from Southwest Sulawesi. Okay. Um. So you would fly from like I think now you can fly into Wakatobi it's a big area for snorkeling so mm -hmm. a lot of people like go out and study like the reef um he's from a small island called Kalidupa but it's across the water from an island called Hoga and there's like a a school out there like people like a place where people come and study like the mm -hmm. ocean life um but okay. is it the is it the west or the east side like or the western islands or the eastern island <laughs> let me get out my map of oh, indonesia okay. <laughs> um but so yeah we did not grow up with like a ton of the culture um so like i said like virginia tech is a very large university there's a whole indonesian like club he's he started to like go to events i think he didn't realize that there were that there were things he could do to feel more at home because he'd been yeah. there for so long and so at home was like he'd already made a home um but through my brother's soccer team actually he met a couple and it was an indonesian woman um with a white has like a white american husband and they live down the street from us. So they became my dad's kind of like, or she became like, cause she was very involved. She was always very involved in like all the things going on on campus and very involved in the, the Indonesian student community and other people community. Um, so she started to like bring him out into things. And so then we would go to her house and like actually eat other like foods, Indonesian foods other than what my dad was making us. Um, okay. And I think he started to see like, oh, I could be doing more Indonesian things. Um, so he, he did, but you know, it didn't stick for very long, but he, he also started going home more often kind of after that. 
Okay. Did you have a desire to like really grasp on to your Indonesian roots? Not really. He kind of just kept that like, I would say, I say he, no, I never really had like, we went, it was just kind of something that we did, mm -hmm. I guess. So like we went when we were five and stayed for like a month and then he took myself he took my brother when he was 16 and he took me when i was 16 so two years apart um so i went to his like home island um for six weeks which was great as a 16 year old like naive american girl yeah that's that's a lot it was a lot <laughs> it was super a lot they all told me that my one of my friends they all like wanted to see my prom pictures and <laughs> That all the blonde girls were Paris Hilton. Were they Paris Hilton? Oh, she looks like Paris Hilton. <laughs> she was the popular. She was popular at the time. Okay, I'm old. Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh yeah. So it is east of, like, it's across the Java Sea from Jakarta. Okay. So sense. I guess the biggest place I can hear is Makassar, which was where we flew into. And then we had to fly to another small island, or no, we took a boat ride to a small island, and then we took a 12-hour boat ride on a boat that may have been constructed with the Mayflower. I got so sick. Whoa. It was so creepy. The bathroom Wait, was like... are you just up. saying that as like no, a huge thing? No, I'm not kidding. It, it was terrifying the boat that the same 12 hour boat ride this the boat that my brother had taken like two years before me was halfway in the water at the pier when we got to our destination like it was done <sighs> and I was like oh my, my dad was cracking up he was like that is the boat we took oh that, my god I, I was on that like two years ago. <laughs> I was like great <laughs> yeah um yeah, it was, uh, yeah, the bathroom was, like, right over the, like, propellers of the boat. It was just open box. So, you were oh, just ew. going to the bathroom, like, above, I mean, it was, like, a, there was, like, a little, like, toilet seat kind of covering the splash, I guess, but, like, you know, at X amount of feet below this hole, you just saw the water and the, you know. Yeah, so it's just splashing your shit, like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. So that was super fun. <laughs> Wait, so um is his family well off in Indonesian like um class? not historically I guess like he didn't grow up rich Indonesian rich I guess mm -hmm. um he grew up in a like you know still to not it was a, it's a kind of a larger house his dad fished um and I think he had a boat, so he okay. was, like, one step above, like, the person working on the boat. Um, okay. But then his, so his sis, his oldest, he has two sisters. One is eight years older than him, and then one is eight years younger than him. With the strategy of you have one, and then the next one comes when they are old enough to take care of. Oh, there was an actual strategy there? Yes. <laughs> okay, not just like my grandparents had 10 kids and they just popped them out every two years. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, and you that is say, my mom grew up in a one bedroom house with a dirt floor and she was second to the youngest. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, they, they were really poor and I think like, but that's the benefit like, you struggle when you have so many kids to feed them. But when yeah. they grow up, all those kids send money home. They're going to take care of you. Yeah. yeah. My dad put a roof on the house, like a red tin roof. Um, and he pays someone to take care of it because that that island is so, like the house that he grew up in, he still owns. But it's such a remote area. And his parents, when they started getting older, they started to move closer to the, like his sisters. Or more inland, I guess. Inland in a sea of islands. Um so, but he still has someone to take care of the house. You know, it's a totally different world. Have you been there since you were 16? No, I have 
not. Do you have des um, any desire to? I do. Uh, I do. Um, but also, my mom gets really nervous that mm -hmm. if we all go on a plane, like she's very nervous that if we all go together, something's going to happen. <gasps> Oh. Um, but also, like, she got really sick. She also probably wouldn't go. Um, so in her mind, it's like a, if all of you go without me, and, and something, something happens. Happen. Yeah, so that's my mom's thinking. She got really, she got really sick when we went in 95 and had to come back and get her gallbladder removed from, like, mm. something she ate. And it sounds very silly, but she's just not, like, that just really fucked her up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's um, understandable. Yeah. So my, yeah. So my dad, I, like we went to college and my brother got married. I had a really great job after college. So we were like doing things. Mm -hmm. um, and so they didn't want to interrupt. They didn't want to like ask us because they knew that we would be like, yeah. yes, immediately. Yes. <laughs> but they were just like, keep living your lives. Oh my gosh. My mom is always like, we're going to go back in two years. She's been saying that literally our entire lives. Every year. And, <laughs> and like, we went back as like the three of us, my mom, my little sister and I in, in 2010. And I had been there as like a toddler with her. Um, and then since 2010, it's like, yeah, we're going to come back in two years. And, like, if they haven't been back. <laughs> I, went, I went for spring break um, when I was studying abroad in Malaysia for a week and, like, went and saw the family. And That's cool, though. Yeah, I'm a little done, though, with going to Cebu. I want to, like, I want to go there. Like, I was on my own when I went there the last time. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm just, like trying so hard to like grasp onto feeling Filipino on my own without like my mom and my community that I grew up with. To check things off of a list. Well I feel like how am I supposed to like really feel what Filipinos like on my own you know with not the things that I've been told like growing up in America in this community. Yeah. Um, how am I supposed to experience that if I don't like go to the Philippines and travel around on my own, you know? Yeah. Like, and I, my mom's similar. She's like, you can travel the world all you want, but don't go to the Philippines by yourself. Like, of course, of course. Thanks. <laughs> Definitely won't do that. Do you feel like, have you learned any Bahasa? No. No, not even a little bit? Not, no, we, yeah, we were, like, not, not really. Does your dad ever speak it around you? When he was angry when I was growing up, he was that parent, you know? Um, mm -hmm. it, it was really weird when I went because, I don't know, my brother and I had very different experiences. Okay. I, like, I mean, not really, I, I don't know. Um, they pretty much were just like, you are the person of honor. You're the guest of honor. Don't do anything. Oh. <laughs> so it was like, I went and I picked out the chicken that we ate and then I couldn't eat the chicken because I was like, you were alive and I picked you out. Oh, no. It was like, yeah. you have to pick, like Liz is the one. My <laughs> brother had to kill, a, kill an animal. So that scarred him for life. Um, oh, geez. So, yeah, we really didn't, like, do much. Wait, were you saying that his was more traumatizing? <laughs> they were both kind of traumatizing. But it was just kind of like we didn't really get to, like, experience anything. The coolest thing okay. I did was, like, meet a girl on the island, and we rode a scooter to watch some soccer tournament. And we saw a Komodo dragon, and she was like, that's normal. He's fine. Let's just keep walking. And I was like, no. <laughs> When you mean experience, do you mean just, like, everything you did included the entire family? It included everyone waiting on me hand and foot uh -huh. for 
asking if I wanted Starbucks when we were like in Jakarta <laughs> and my dad's like friend they, you know they picked us up and it was like him and his daughters it was just I felt like I wasn't like getting there was like maybe one or like maybe three days total out of the six weeks that I was there that I that I had moments of like this is cool or like this is like not normal yeah. in my world um which I but I feel like then I wasn't even like con I wasn't thinking about like I want to do more of that I was just like going with what everyone you know what we were supposed to be doing uh -huh. on a schedule whatever they wanted to do yeah um, which is and I really like never thought what do what was it just like the excitement of having you there and they just wanted to show you everything or yeah it was like very exhausting yeah. for like me in that age um and then but it's also really expensive to go and so it'd be like my brother and I have always begged my dad to like take us again mm -hmm. um but it's really expensive because it's you have really to pay for to all of the family and yeah you have to take yeah. everyone everywhere and it's and everyone finds out that like Hamid like that, you know, the one that lives in America is coming. So everyone and their husband's sister-in-law's cousin is also coming to dinner with you. And yeah. so now you have to rent out the restaurant. Yeah. You know, restaurant. This is like in the one area that there's a restaurant. Or like you have to buy all the food for everyone. And then everyone yeah. on the island knows that you live in America. So they charge you more for anything at the market. I think that um, when we went, the three of us, to the Philippines, I think our total trip, like including tickets, cost my mom like $14,000 for six weeks. Yeah. It was so expensive. And we had been saving for years. Like, hey. <laughs> oh, are you guys done? I am. I am. Oh, okay. You guys are Okay. See you, Jordan. Um, we had saved for years, like all of our old clothes and like our shoes and things that were in like good enough condition to go back home, you know, as like presents. Yeah. And I think okay. like, that's been a huge thing of like the, in two years we'll go, but you know, in two years, it's not enough time to save like another 15 grand. Yeah. It's, Yeah. The only reason that, like, my dad gets to go, I mean, not the only reason, but a lot of the reason my dad gets to go is because my mom's brother travels a lot for work, and he'll save up his points, uh -huh. and so that he'll take something off of, uh, like, my dad getting to go see his family. Yeah. So, like, that's a really great, like, nice thing, um, but it's still expensive, and then to send, like, one extra person mm -hmm. I mean it's like 24 hours in the air yeah <laughs> oh you're frozen Yay, oh, you're back. There you are. <laughs> okay. Um, I was in my hot spot. My phone was getting hot. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Okay. Well, but let's circle this back to Missoula then. So what have you oh, yeah, experiences? Sorry. Oh, no. Like, I love talking about um, <laughs> just like Indonesia <laughs> and like, <laughs> Malaysia <laughs> and just like the Philippines, you know, like, I feel like I've spent a lot of time there and I just love talking about it. But, um, I mean, I haven't been to Indonesia. I just, like, had a lot of Indonesian friends. <laughs> <laughs> Similar, yeah. But, um, yeah, so what have your experiences in Missoula been like? Do you feel like they've been, like, oh, you look excited. <laughs> just, just give it um, to me. It's been super interesting. Okay. And I've not really known how to, like, I don't really know how I feel about it. Like, I think that Missoula 
um, a lot of most of the people, pretty much everyone that I've met here has been like lovely, very, they want, to me, it's like they want to do all the right, not do all the right things, but like be as good of a person as they can be and like accepting, but they don't have a lot of experience with with diversity, it's actually diversity in any capacity. Like it's, yeah. Missoula's pretty same person or like the same 10 type of people I, in my head. Like if I were to like categorize like Missoulians, you know, yeah. or you know, people in this area. Um, I've had more like awkward, like, racially like not positive interactions here in the like four years uh -huh. <laughs> sorry <laughs> the pandemic okay. is leaving <laughs> yeah. Bye. okay sorry no it's okay um i totally get it i lived that life <laughs> for a while as well um i've had like definitely more confrontational racial incidents in, in like my four years in Missoula than really? I ever had in the Southeast. Okay, tell me I about think those. That people, like, I just think that like people out here kind of think that the South is like the enemy, mm -hmm. but it's like really just racist people and mean people are the enemy, Wait, what um, no matter those where experiences? they are. Um, and it's, it could just be because like, things are a little more like hush hush I don't know like they're just not I, I don't know if it's I don't know what the factors are I'm sure there are a lot um I went to a country concert and was like barricaded from Tom because what? I went to the bathroom like right before the person came on and I like was walking in with two beers and I was with a girl that I, we had met like before the show even started and she was like bumping into everybody getting through and I was like excuse me like excuse me and uh someone ran into me and a little bit of beer spilled on this woman and then everyone in her group just started yelling at me oh my god and like I don't know if it was racial but it felt really racial yeah. I um, think when you feel that, though, <laughs> I think that you're... I was like, valid. my boyfriend is, like, right there. He's, he's that guy. And they were like, no, he's not. You, you, your boyfriend's not over here. None of these guys are your boyfriend. And I was like... Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that happened. Um, you said there are four, like, major incidents? I don't know if I said four. If I did say oh. four, <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell I've, had, me four. I've had more. I've had more racial incidents oh, here okay. um, than I had grow like anywhere before I lived here, which was mm -hmm. North Carolina, Virginia, which is like you know Civil War battleground. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there were definitely incidents there, but they were very much more of the like you can't hang out with those people or like someone's parents telling them they couldn't date somebody or hang out with somebody. Mm -hmm. That kind of, uh, that was my experience. But that was also like my, me growing up. That's like growing up. Your parents are telling you what to do and whatnot. Yeah. Um, even at the radio station, I got, um, that we got a phone call. I mean, we work in public radio. So um, this guy called and he, I don't even, I hardly remember it because it was, very early on in me working there and they were um talking about how we needed to stop talking about you know whatever we were talking about that um and I mean it was just an old guy ranting pretty much at the end of the day but then he started talking shit about like Muslims and immigrants and I was oh like gosh. excuse me sir like it's four o'clock it's like 4 50 on a you know <laughs> weeknight I'd really like to go home without having this conversation yeah um but then he just kept going and he called back and I was like uh sir I am the daughter of an immigrant and he is a Muslim 
Uh-huh. You know, look at me. And he said, well, he should probably get the fuck back. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. I was like, I don't know you. And like, I can't, it's hard to be offended. Like, you try to not be offended because you're like, this person clearly like has some other shit going on uh-huh. in whatever way. This has nothing to do with me, but you can't help but not like, you, it's hard to separate it fully. Or it was hard for me. Um, so that was like really weird. Uh, but I think there's just, no, I just, there's like a lack of diversity. And so people like don't know. Don't, yeah. Just don't doing know right how to talk. Or, and... Yeah. Or they don't know, like maybe in their head, they want to be and think they are doing whatever the right thing is, but, and they have no idea that what they're doing is like offensive or, um, mm-hmm like looks off yeah and then sometimes people are like trying not to be offensive but in that are kind of being offensive (laughs) it's a double-edged sword I guess yeah yeah so it's just been it's been weird it's been weird for sure yeah do you feel like how do you feel about BIPOC do you feel like it's something that like you were eagerly or were you eager to be a part of I honestly like didn't know if I should be a part of it yeah I had a very hard time like identifying with like should I be what should I be doing like what's my Mm -hmm. role in this community of people is that because you're Asian or is that because you're biracial or both maybe kind of um kind of both but also kind of just like uh is this like my time to like I don't know yeah I just I just don't know my role in this yeah. group and community or like I don't know maybe if I'm necessarily like the person that uh people need to look at for help and maybe that's just me not knowing what I'm like what I should be doing or how I should be doing it I think like that's exactly how I felt like literally up until these interviews I was like well I'm Asian yeah am <laughs> so, I like I yeah like I'm Asian so like my oppression is like not even a fraction yeah of the same oppression as being black or indigenous Right. And so, and then also just like, like as I've gotten older and I, the more I've become a part of white culture, just like, cause I'm not like, you know, like I wasn't really allowed to do anything after school, you know? Um, and like, now that I run my own life, like, I, like in the last like 10 years, I've been told like, you're white, you know, like my voice as a Filipino has been minimalized and not by other Filipinos, but just like by like, yeah, yeah just by white people. And um, so that like really hasn't helped in like the like eagerness to be a part of BIPOC, but definitely relatable. But I think like after having so many of these conversations, I realized that a lot of people feel that way and like to me when I've met them I'm like of course you're a person of color and like and even though they have this insecurity about it yeah like I think it's I think that someone else said that is white privilege right there is like centering everything about being white you know and really it's like even though we grew up in America, we're not a white culture, you know? Like, oh. there are places yeah. where there are more, uh, like, white people, you know, like Montana. <laughs> yes. But, but we're, we're a melting pot. We're a diverse nation. And, like, and that's, like, what a lot of people have been saying they want to see from, like, white allies is, like, having this internal dialogue that it's not about like yes there's white privilege but don't like 
don't feel like sorry like that people can't have the same privileges as you recognize that you're not the center like it's not all about you it's right. like I don't know <laughs> I, I get that but it, it's it's gonna take a more time than I I mean maybe that's just me thinking because like there's it, a lot of time has passed in my like memory of caring about things like this or anything mm -hmm. remotely like this um and I think that it's a lot for every, I don't know. I think a lot of people are still trying to swallow like the same things, but just from their perspective, like the same yeah. kind of like, where do I sit here? Like, where am I in this? What should I be doing? What can I be doing? What should I not be doing? Um, yeah. yeah. It, but yeah, there's uh but that's another thing, like white privilege. Like I've definitely benefited from it. Mm -hmm. and so then it's kind of like it, it's you're just in the middle of this like I am not black I am yeah. not white but I've experienced both yeah and I think that that's the interesting part of like BIPOC is that like we could people of color could easily be left out of that you yes. know and like and I think it's an interesting choice that we were included you know yeah I, but i don't i guess i ha like i i'm a little curious about bipoc and like what like i talked somebody the other day asked me what it was like three days ago what that meant like the like specifically the words or i had no idea what the b-i-p-o-c okay like had never heard of it. Uh huh. And I was just like, so what have you been talking about? Like, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so it's it's interesting. Like that's a phrase that like they're not using in a lot of places still. Okay. So like we're not included in I mean, we're kind of included. I well, it's a really new term. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like in the recent month. Or months yeah but I feel like at this point if you're like kind of informed you should like if you're kind of informed yeah they have seen it come up yeah um I I don't know it so I, I feel like that's another thing it's like are we included everywhere or is it just where there are indigenous people or just where oh. there are black people because uh -huh. uh, there are places that are have neither okay like in the country and so i think that's another factor sorry i'm just <laughs> um so, I, yeah i'm having like a hard time like was it like days ago that it was literally days ago that you had heard the term the first time no a friend of mine okay like we were texting oh like, it was the first time she heard it yeah, or he, yeah, he had heard it, like, he had never, he was like, what does that mean? Okay. And I was and like, where, where did, where does he live? They live in Virginia. Oh, interesting. Which is not, like, a place with none of that, like, that has all of that. I feel um, like it's, I think, I feel like it was originated on Instagram, and, like, and I feel... <laughs> I feel like that's kind of just like where it's been centered and then I like I think like I feel like maybe in Helena it's not really a term yet you know what I mean like I think yeah. that it's transitioned into more liberal communities that For sure. um but not you're right not quite everywhere yet so, yeah I I'm still like personally trying to grasp like that I am a person of color like I just yeah. I so it's weird for me to identify like I I had multiple people be like hey can I feature you for this like we're doing you know yeah that like, happened to me too and I I didn't like it at I didn't either I was like I 
will recommend like five black artists that I like. <laughs> I don't know them because I just follow them on Instagram, but here you go. Mm -hmm. I, it felt weird. And so I think that's kind of, that kind of started my like skepticism of like. And it which, felt like dirty kind of, right? Like. Yeah. Like, am I benefiting from, I don't want to benefit from something like this. Yeah. Unless it is like rights for everyone and yeah. like bigger picture things um I think like that's definitely where I've been literally up until these interviews and I think like I, I just realized how like important these interviews have been just of like like just talking about people's stories and like their identity problems and like a lot of people have been feeling this way about being included in BIPOC, you know, like, but there are still, like, there's still all these voices, and they still I think if, people of color. <laughs> yeah, and I think, though, like, if anything, it's just, like, allowed me to find people that I have this experience in like common experience. with. Yeah. yeah. And, like, it's been really healing, and I never knew that I was lacking that. That's super cool. Did How many ever, interviews have you done? Um, I think that, I think this is, like, the 13th. Wow. And then I have a couple more tomorrow, and then I'm done. <laughs> just, like, they've been so good, and I'm so appreciative. Every single one of them is so different. But, um... Yeah. Have you, did you see Crazy Rich Asians? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, did you feel like, I remember going to the movie theater with my mom and my little sister, and we were laughing at parts where no one else no, no, in no, the no. audience, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and it was mm -hmm. just so nice to have, like, a character, an Asian American character. Yeah, like, all like the here. different types of people, yeah that like uh, we would get <laughs> uh-huh and so I feel like the BIPOC thing is like uh, that I, where I'm uh, like getting these people that I finally relate to you know yeah congrats yay that's oh exciting. thanks <laughs> no, I mean like that's exciting that this is that you've gotten this opportunity and like you get to hear um from a lot of different people like it's it's very comforting like I was telling you like my old roommate like we had never really met anybody else that was like the tan friend and yeah. that like had these experiences and then we were like oh my gosh like you too and like um like when our when my dad met her mom they just like went on talking about like their life like they're very oh. very different people okay. very different people but um had a lot of weird things in common, um, kind of the same way we did. So yeah, it, it is interesting to find people like that. I think there's something about just like migrating and like, you know, being yeah. a dual citizen, being like biracial, being multiracial, that like you have more in common, even if it's not the same culture or ethnicity, there's something that you know, there's that shared experience of being somewhere where you don't quite fit into the majority. Yeah. Okay, I'm killing mosquitoes. All right, I have one last question for you. Okay. And um, that is, what would you like to see from white allies or just Missoula in general to make it a more inclusive environment for you? <laughs> I thought it was um, frozen, <laughs> and then I saw your eyes moving. Um, I, I don't know. I, um, I feel really bad. I haven't, like, I'm not, like, super, especially now that we live, like, in Tura, in an RV, uh -huh. <laughs> like, and it's a COVID, especially like recently, of recent, I have felt like less than a member of a community, just because we're not being communal. Yeah. Um, so my recent memory is like, so foggy about anything like this. Um, but I, I have, I, I really 
don't know what I would tell like or ask of the community as a whole mm -hmm. um I just I just would appreciate if people were nicer <laughs> I mean everyone's like yeah. nice but I guess uh it's still like even even liberals can be really catty and very snarky and I don't think that they quite realize it and like I'm I would consider myself a liberal but I grew up around a lot of non-liberals and so like yes they can be snarky but so can liberals and so I've even though I'm like on the same side as a lot of people and in convert around conversations that I'm in or hear other people having it's like oh you still kind of sound like an asshole like but like I don't want to do what you're doing either just because yeah. of like your vibes and like how you're presenting you know like yeah it's, it's very frustrating and it's upsetting and people do but like no one's gonna listen to you and your stance if you don't give them the same kind of treatment yeah so that is that is kind of like some a common continuous thing that I've kind of noticed. I mean, even with people that I like really appreciate here that I've met, um, it's kind of like, okay, okay. Like they have an opinion too. If you want yours listened to, you might need to just like try to pretend to listen, you know, give them some credit for having an opinion. Yeah, even if it's like completely the opposite. Yeah. yeah. So there, are, I have noticed that's something I would like to see, like, just a little more openness, actual openness, not just like, we love gays and people of color, so we're open, you know, it's like, there's and a lot. And then never interact with any yeah, of Yeah, yeah, I love the gays, but I've never met one, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, yeah. I appreciate that, but like, here, I'm gay, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm gay. I think I would love it if people... Like, instead of, like, specifically white people, instead of just, like, you know, like, doing just the social media stuff of, like, reposting and stuff, is, like, why don't you come up and, like, ask me about my experiences and just listen, you know, like. Are there, like, forums? Like, where, how would that even, how would you initiate that? Or how would someone initiate that? Um. Oh God, I don't know. And the, like, that's what I'm, that's what I always wonder too. Um, I don't know. I'm just like, if someone's actually curious, like, just ask me, you know, like, I feel like a lot of people like hide behind um, just talking about like the major points, you know, that are going on right now. And I then to engage in a discussion or look further into something yeah or just like talk to the people that they live in a community with you know and like I think just like having these conversations just like what was your life like growing up and like you know I think I guess it's like that guy that was like hard conversations with a black man like the guy the football player that started those like YouTube videos um I think something along those lines but it was like, oh, I saw, I saw the thumbnails, but I haven't yeah. watched any of them. I haven't either, but I think that's like, kind of like, how else are people, but then I guess if someone is asking me like, where are you from? No, but where are you from? Maybe they're just wording it wrong. Should I be mad at them for asking me in a dumb way? Probably not. But after the millionth time, it gets annoying. Yeah. Um, but like, is that them trying to engage in like a deeper conversation eventually? I don't know. Yeah. But I feel like it's that kind of a situation is a little overdone. And mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that people actually watch figure these. Out, yeah. <laughs> I figure feel out like, how to ask those questions if they really want a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I think like even just like watching these videos, these interviews is a really good place to start. You know? Are these going to be going somewhere? <laughs> Yeah, I talked to the Zach, and they will be posting them on their website. Only the good part. <laughs> the <laughs> Only the good answer. Literally the whole thing, because I feel like it, it's, like, not necessarily these questions. Oh, my gosh, something just dropped on me. Um, not just these questions that are important, but I think just the whole picture, you know, like. 
have. That's like a genuine conversation. So yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, Liz, I'm going to go inside now. Okay. Hey, yeah, <laughs> it's you so should. so nice seeing you. I know. It's good to see you. By the way, you would look really great bald because it's <laughs> all three behind you. So you look like your head is shaved and it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Like, I've gotten that by like almost every boyfriend I've had. They've all just randomly said, you look great bald. <laughs> okay. Well, I wish you could see yourself right now because the tree is this big shadow, but then your hair is dark and all I can see is your face because of your computer. <laughs> You would really, oh. I, mean, I mean, it's. Oh, it's thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Bye. I hope the mosquitoes get you too bad. That's why I'm inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye.